When I saw the first images of the Neo 45 trimaran, I simply fell in love with this design and I started to dream to sail around with this boat. Now it is still my dream boat after one week uh, cruising with my family. Mm, let's find out. So hello and welcome to this new video. A quick disclaimer up front. I do private reviews and we paid the full price for this charter. I'm not a professional boating journalist nor a trained video editor. Um, and uh, here I tell my true personal and honest opinion. So leave your comments and thumbs up. I'm always happy to learn more. So for a plan to sail around the world, uh, we test different sailing vessels that are are suitable to this into our eyes. And that's also how I came to the Neil 45 as a fast, comfortable cruising trimaran with lots of space for um, for six to eight people. And uh, what really, really triggered me for this catamaran was everything in one uh, level that uh, you can live fine without uh, getting stairs up and down. You live uh, on, a, uh, on sea level all the time. And uh, the second thing is it sails like hell. It is so comfortable and, uh, and at the waves, it really cuts through the waves. Sometimes when I saw waves like one meter ahead from us, um, and I always thought we would bump into them and uh, we would come to an instant stop. But this razor sharp uh, blade like um, hulls, they just cut through the water. And with a little bit of wind from the side, also one armor lifts the water and we are only sailing on two hulls. And that's a, a perfect feeling. It's so nice. And the boat is fast. We did um, usually between 70 and 90% of wind speed below 10 knots of wind. And sometimes in the right wind angles, we even did uh, one to one. So um, full wind speed uh, only with uh, the sails, with the main sail and with the Genoa. And um, it was really comfortable to ride uh, in this um, conditions. Here you also see we're going very comfortable eight knots only with the jib and uh, here 6.1 with the, with a major reef. And uh, what's astonishing, we still could drink a coffee on the table while we were cutting through the waves. And uh, the, so healing was not that bad. The reefing system is um, a double line reefing system. What was bugging me here is uh, that there were no blocks and uh, they this setup gave a little bit of resistance to this. But nevertheless, the handling was very, very easy. And uh, it's really fun to sail this. And, I always felt very comfortable with this uh, when we were on the sea. And when you see other boats next to it, it's like being in a parking lot and you just pass by. We were doing significantly higher speeds than most boats around us. And uh, quite often we saw them frustratedly uh, switching off the engines at times when we still could sail very comfortable on the water. So for sailing, this is perfect. For inside, for watch keeping, uh, you can sit downstairs and you still have uh, more than 180 degree visibility. So uh, in bad weather conditions, you can still can sit here. The kitchen is in the middle of the boat. Um, so it also doesn't shake much when you're, when you're sailing. This is one bed room. The other one is a copy of that almost, and you're living um, on sea level all the time. There's another uh, double berth um, in, the, in the middle hull, which we show, see in a moment. The visibility here is just great. And also there's a, a shade above the windows, which makes it comfortable. Here it's more than eight knots and the boat's barely moving. It's so comfortable and, and really fast and really stable. So this was really astonishing. Um, when you go out, uh, we have a German sheeting system, which I learned to like a lot as well. So um, sheeting is easy. You don't have a traveler. It's more easy to handle. And I believe it's also more safe on, on the way. Um, the navigation system in this uh, boat also was very, um, yeah, was was normal, or was was fine, easy to handle. Uh, we had, I think, it was 280 watts of solar, and even in this uh, conditions, now we had little uh, wind speeds here. It was so comfortable. You could sit on a coach roof. You could uh, sit in the nets. We very often uh, were launching in the nets, sunbathing, and was really comfortable and nice. So. Yeah, you, you hear me. I, I really love this uh, uh, this boat for sailing. Um, here, sometimes you see the one hull lifting the water. When it 
gets back into the water, you barely notice it. Also, we didn't uh, recognize any bridge deck slapping. So um, also, I believe this boat would be pretty comfortable uh, when you're on the way for, for ocean crossings. Uh, here you see that uh, the, the, uh, the um, windboard armor is lifting uh, the uh, out of the water. Um, for, yeah, under motor, the boat also was uh, going pretty good. At 2,200 RPM, uh, the boat did uh, more than eight knots. And for the whole cruise, we used about 2.9 liters uh, of fuel per hour by average. Um, but also here we went pretty gentle. Um, we didn't uh, give full throttle or anything. Um, we like sailing and uh, sometimes we only switch uh, the motor on for getting into the harbor. Uh, you, that was usually behavior. And sometimes we only started it when we really, really couldn't move. Um, yeah, for, for docking, it was pretty... Mm, yeah, let's say I w the first time I was really happy to have a bow thruster. Um, why this? The boat is extremely wide. It's it's nine meters wide, and you're, uh, it's, it feels like you're uh, docking a huge square, where uh, only the middle hull is really in the water, and uh, the windage is quite big, and it, it doesn't have much resistance in the water, so therefore it also drifts quickly aside, and uh, only the. The, the middle hull is deeper and connects to the uh, to the side. So um, docking, um, you only can enter the, the land from the middle hull. So when we go now go inside, here we have the, the um, one armor. My kids were here in this um, in this uh, armor. They were sleeping there, and uh, the cabins here. And this is a charter version, though. It's for me, it's okay built. It's nice for, for guests overnight, especially for kids. You have crash structure and uh, bilge pumps uh, uh, in the front. Uh, there's my daughter playing cards. And uh, both kids are, were very happy to have this um, this outrigger for themselves. This is the one of the main cabins. <laughs> also imagine to wake up and have a look like this at the beach. Um, the beds, all beds were pretty short with about one meter 90. And I'm uh, one meter 79 tall. So it's about uh, 5'11 uh, for American friends. So I always felt a little bit narrow. Also the, the middle column, easy to, to hit your head, although it's it's um, it's protected. So um, it's, it's not hard corners. Um, the cabinets here are fairly big. You can put a lot of stuff. I mean, you were the clothes from my parents, but behind of that, you have uh, lots of space to uh, to put more things. So, for storage, it's at the lower end of what we you would need. This uh, model had two bathrooms uh, with showers, and um, it worked well. Only the toilet seat was pretty high, so um, not very suitable for kids. And um, it's good if you for the men when they. Uh, uh, want to go to the toilet and they prefer not to sit down on the sea but usually i would prefer to have a lower toilet seat this version here is actually a neil 45 evolution you can see this with the transoms and also the coach roof is a hard uh, hard it's a hard bimini top um, and uh, the previous model only has a soft top so this one is the yeah, upgraded or improved version um, also at anchor, the, the pathways to the front, they're very, very wide with the hand rates. I th I'm not sure if they were aftermarket, but I felt very safe and, um, and stable to walk around here. And um, since I already mentioned before, the, the bridge deck slam, there was no bridge deck slamming and the ride was very comfortable. We always felt very safe and, and uh, good on this boat. So um, what else can we say? Yeah, uh, sail handling uh, was uh, was good. Uh, this one was equipped with, with radar. Um, so yeah, total there uh, there two three double cabins in the middle uh, in the bridge deck and in the middle hull, and there were two. Um, uh, the outriggers were also equipped with uh, 
two beds uh, each. So in total, we were 10 people. Um, three people were uh, around 80 years old and we had also three kids. So we go to the uh, room where my wife and uh, me stayed. It's in the middle hall and to the front with a nice escape hatch, which also acts like a, like a nice uh, window. You can open it and get a fresh breeze from close to the seawater. Um, it has uh, more than plen uh, plenty of refrigeration uh, space. The nav station offers you good visibility and um, this boat actually didn't have the remote control option, but it's available with a navigation system. So let's go down to the engine uh, room. This is huge. Lots of space, but it's not uh, used very well. I would suggest to put some cabinets in there for clothes and stuff, but um, here you, you go down on your knees to um, to uh, grab all the things. Um, you see this boat actually has a lifting keel. Um, the draft, when the keel is up, is or the dagger board, the, the, um, the draft is only one meter 20, so it really can go to very shallow water. The installation looked fine to me. Uh, inverters and uh, um, batteries and, and all the switches were fine. It has a heating system and um, what was really, really bugging me is uh, when we go through uh, the hatch in a moment, uh, the water system, we had two water tanks uh, and also it had a seawater uh, tank. Here is the fuel tank below the, the um, below my knees and it's very, very low center of gravity and it's also in the middle of hull, which is screwed. Here we have the room for the motor and this hatch actually was killing me this door. I, you, it didn't fix to the top and uh, also the wastewater tanks are in the back. So every time when we were leaving the harbor or getting back into to marinas or something, we had to open and close them. And um, this actually was quite a, quite bugging me. So now I, I fix it and uh, there's a light and in a moment you can see a little bit more. So here we are inside the engine room. The steering columns for the uh, are, are very easy accessible. You need, uh, also the motor maintenance should be very easy. Here, uh, headroom is not plenty, but it's good enough to work there. When you sit, everything is fine. Here the wastewater tanks uh, and the, the, um, the seawater um, valves are below there. Here we are back into the, to the water pump, seawater and freshwater pump. And um, yeah, then we will go up, uh, back up to the um, to the saloon. Yeah, see water pumps, two pumps to switch over. So the um, the dagger board is hidden in the in the stair um, uh, in the stairs here. You could switch off between the different um, power supplies, you could switch back and forth. So getting back up here, now going to the aft, the seating area is fine for six to eight people. With 10, it was very, uh, very, um, yeah, very tight. The dinghy lifting was very easy. And um, yeah, besides that, it was a very comfortable and uh, nice ride in the boat. Um, here we go have a look at the anchor chain uh, locker. Um, yeah, the anchor was very easily accessible, although I think this boat didn't have a very long anchor chain. Here we have the bow thruster. Let me switch the light on just a second. Yeah. Uh, here's the bow thruster uh, with its dedicated battery. Also, you see a crash structure to, uh, to the front. So I would suppose the boat is, will be quite quite good, although I would have wished to to be able to close the complete front compartment as an additional crash structure uh, for safety reasons. Here, out of the escape hatch, you can get uh, um, out into the water where we are here now. Here you see the dagger board below uh, the keel. Um, the keel and the dagger board uh, easily can break off, so um, this wouldn't be any danger. And um, I'm pretty sure the boat will do pretty good um, even with the with the cutoff uh, 
keel. But what uh, for for offshore cruising, um, more risky in my eyes is the the rudder is not. Uh, it's an unskeked rudder. It's not very well protected, especially if the keel is up. So this mm, you need to consider. But anyway, boats a compromise. This is a performance boat. It's for sailing, and um, this is a re whole point of it. Sail fast, sail with a lot of fun, sail with uh, sail through the um, through waves without a big hassle, and um, that's what this boat is all about. Um, this has a we had a bridle um, for the anchor. Actually, I didn't really get to set it up properly. We didn't have much um, much opportunity to test. To test actually, Wiley Sharp, this uh, catamaran expert, he said he didn't like the, the needles for um, for pounding or for um, swing at anchor. I couldn't recognize any of that. Um, although we didn't have really bad conditions for um, for sailing for for, for the anchorage um, and everything. It was fine for me. We didn't swing more or we didn't shake more than others. So uh, I, from my point, this is um, it's not really a, um, something uh, which I could uh, say. Here's the bow thruster. It's built in. It doesn't pop out, which is fine. And yeah, so the the whole, whole structure, it's here from the side. You can't see how, how slim and uh, the, um, how slim and uh, razor blade like. <laughs> It's uh, the, the hulls are they're really in a V shape, so they really cut through the water. And also at anchor, uh, you didn't hear the sl the slapping of the waves below the hull, as you know from many mono hulls with a with a big um, um, propos there. Folding prop, of course, uh, as normal. The the rudder was quite good. Um, also, with, uh, by the way, with tacking. Um, we had to, to figure it out properly how to trim the mainsail that um, the boat wouldn't go into the wind. Now you see the outriggers, they just go 20 centimeters into the water and they're, they just touch barely touch the, the water. And uh, that's really fascinating that the boat can get all the stability from this little bit uh, of the outriggers uh, of the armors uh, in the water. So for, for me, it's just a fascinating boat. But would it be a boat for us to sail around the world? Probably not. And the reason is the overall finish is not the best. It's um, the, uh, the the cabinetry is not well. My wife said um, paying this amount of money for this boat, it's it's too much. Currently, you can find uh, Neil 45s with uh, starting at 395,000 uh, euros at um, at um, boat world, uh, at yacht, yacht world and uh, boats.com and so on. So is it worth this price? Mm, maybe, at least my wife says no. Um, and uh, I had a discussion with the, um, with the boatyard uh, manager and he said that the, um, that the Neil 51 would be a much, much better choice. It's twice the, the expensive but it's three times better. So if anyone knows someone who would like to borrow a Neil 51 for, to me, or also an Ultramare uh, 49, 51, or maybe a Katana 47 or a Katana 50, or anything uh, similar like that, I will be happy to, to go on this and to do this kind of review with that as well. So yeah, stay tuned. Thanks a lot. And um, yeah, looking forward to get a thumbs up or comments. I'm happy to discuss with you. So thanks a lot. Talk to you next time. Bye.